What's up, people? Today we're going to work on doing coax. Uh, we're going to start off with the RG59, and then we're going to go up to the 56, and then finally the 11. With coax, the thicker the gauge, the better reception you get from the cable. So the 11 is the by far the best cable, of course, to have, but that's definitely not what runs through your house. The 56 would be what runs through your house. Sometimes when you're in a worst area, the 59 is all you can get, unfortunately. So I'm going to start off by showing you the difference between all the cables here. Now we're going to start with the 59, uh, which is the smaller pin cable here. As you can see, the, the diode in the center is smaller. Uh, I will show you the difference when we get to the 56. That one's a little bit bigger. And of course the 11 is bigger than that. So the old style connector is what you would, what you just saw. The ones where you would basically you, you people could use a hand tool, any hand tool and just crunch it on. Uh, nowadays we crimp them. Uh, the newer ones have a tapered end as you saw earlier. Uh, I'm just going to cut this one here and we'll get started making the cable. First thing you're going to want to do is uh, grab your stripper and just look at the markings. This one has special markings on it to tell you how to slide it in. Right? Uh, you just want to push this clip up uh, just so you can get a, a perfect cut. So you just slide it in, pull this pin or push down on this pin. And then once it's seated, you just spin it around a couple times and you pull on it. And voila, this is what we will be working with. So these braided parts, you will just push down or peel back, however you want to think about it. And then the silver piece there should be up. The white part is your shielding. The braided is also your shielding and the silver piece keeps the white part in. So you just want to grab your connector and just insert it. And then the twist method usually works, especially for these older cables and just do it enough till it's seated. And you, of course you just want to make it flush. Then you just grab your handy crimper and we're just going to push or squeeze on the crimper to apply pressure so that the connector gets seated properly. All right. So this type of uh, crimper I have here, it's meant for two types of cables. So the 11, 56 and the 59, of course. So technically three. But if you have it pushed out as it is now, you are likely to damage yours. So make sure it is pushed in so that you can properly crimp the cable you have. You want to push it out if you're doing the 11 because it is a bigger cable and the connectors are bigger on them. So when you're ready, just grab your cable and your crimper and you just want to insert it so that the, the pin goes into that hole there and you just squeeze and it brings the double piece into a single piece as you can see here just in case you missed it i'm just going to show you the difference between an uncrimped and crimped one as you can see there's a double barrel here and on here is a single barrel now with that being said sometimes you could come across one that has a sing a double barrel that means it has not been crimped by whoever was there. The best way to tell is to try and pull it off. If it does not budge, it's been properly crimped. The next one we're going to work on is the 56 here. Um, I've already done one end and the other end is just a little dirty. So I'm just going to cut it off. And as you can see here, this one's a little bit thicker than the other one. I always like to start off with a fresh end. It's not 
necessary to do it, but I, that's just how I do things. So once again, just clean out your uh, stripper here and just do the same thing. Just insert it, a couple twists and pull off. And this one's pretty much done the same way as the 59. Just peel back, make sure there's no uh, cables or wiring around that copper pin. If there is wiring around it, you will have impedance and you will have signal issues. So just want to make sure it's nice and clean as mine is here. And we could just go ahead and insert it. As you can see, the end here is a little bit different. The 59 is tapered and this one's more of a, a straight uh, cylindrical, right? No taper here for the 56. Also, the inside is wider because we are dealing with a slightly bigger cable, of course. So you just want to make sure you're using the right connector for the right cables. So we're just going to go ahead and slide this one on to our newly, uh, newly stripped cable here. And pretty much the same method. This one you could just slide on, but the twist method I find always works better. And we just, like I said before, same thing push in, make sure it's seated properly, and just squeeze away. If you have the right tools, these two cables are the easiest to work with. And I, I have a wall plate here, but I do not have the wall plate insert. So I'm just gonna demonstrate it with a F81 here. This is a grounding one. With copper wire, you always wanna make sure it's grounded. So that's why there is a ground block. So I'm just going to demonstrate what it would look like in a house, uh, in any typical house. And yeah, they all fit on this uh, connection here. If you need to know how to make an RG11, just check out my RG11 video and I'll show you exactly how to do that. And that's all folks. Thanks for watching. Uh, that's how you make a 59 and a 56 cable. See you guys in the next one.